I have always been drawn to water. Since I was four years old, I started sailing on Lake Michigan in my grandfather's 26-foot wooden sailboat. I, after college, moved to Sausalito and immediately started teaching sailing. All my friends would say, I want to do what you're doing. How can I do it? In 1979, I founded a global yacht chartering business because I wanted to provide access to the ocean world to people so they could have the experiences that I've had. And also because I believe that people being on the ocean allows them to learn about it and realize how important it is to preserve. I also founded a nonprofit organization at the same time because I was totally devoted to preserving a healthy ocean. The ocean is the blue heart of our planet, such a magnificent area to explore and an important area to preserve. I did all of this sailing, covering over 115,000 miles and going to a variety of places many times. Tahiti, at French Polynesia 16 times, Galapagos 23 times, Belize six times, and on and on to magical corners of the world. And as I saw them, over years, I saw the changes happening, and I saw more and more plastic. So in um, 2009, many things seemed to converge. I had been seeing more and more plastic. Boats around the world were giving me reports of encountering plastic on deserted islands and mid-ocean. I began reading about the issue and many people said, well, these plastics are out in the middle of the ocean. It's impossible to clean them up. And I guess the impossible got my Irish spirit going because mid-ocean is a place I and many other maritime professionals love. It's a place that we want to keep clean. And so I decided to put together an expedition on a 151-foot brigantine and to bring a group of scientists and uh, engineers and sailors out so we could observe what was going on there mid-ocean and figure out the best ways to clean it up. We ended up having a trip that left many people in tears because we saw so much of our garbage mid-ocean. The scientists did st studies around um, a small fish called a mctophid that is part of the food chain. And it um, usually eats plankton and then bigger fish eat it. But the mctophids are now eating plastic and plastic is getting into all the fish and into our food chain. And so these time we spent the month mid-ocean let me know that we had to move forward on finding solutions. 
I saw that this problem was kind of out of sight, out of mind. In fact, it was very difficult raising funds because many people considered this garbage gyre, which is actually the North Pacific subtropical convergence zone, to be an urban myth. There's no floating island double the size of Texas. But if you pushed everything together out there, it probably at this point would be about four times the size of Texas. But it's scattered around. In the fall of 2010, we began an Ocean Voyages Institute marine debris collection think do tank. And all of these naval architects, marine engineers, fishermen, oceanographers, ocean industry people helped us figure out from all the observations we've done on our two expeditions, what would be the best way to clean up this debris? And we decided the best way was to use existing maritime equipment. So to use cargo ships, to use work boats, to use fishing vessels, to use things like oil skimmers to pick up small pieces, not to reinvent the wheel, but to innovate. We invented these GPS satellite trackers, which are about the size of a soccer ball. And we thought that we would give these trackers to vessels sailing across this region, and they could tag the trackers to big ghost nets or other large debris, which would allow us to then follow them in real time and be able to help know the way the debris gets distributed, and that when we were going out with our cleanup vessels, that they could go directly to the track debris. Ghost nets are derelict fishing gear. And so they're nets that are floating in the ocean. And they continue to fish. They continue to kill. So they capture fish and sea turtles and porpoises and all types of marine life and kill them. And they also sometimes go out of the gyre area and they'll go against reefs and they'll smother the coral reefs and kill them as well. So ghost nets are a very worthy and important thing for us to remove from the ocean. They're a very good target as is all the consumer debris. Another thing I realized from the first two month-long expeditions and had heard about from oceanographers is the ocean has an amazing way of sorting things. So you'd be mid-ocean and you'd come across 5,000 big white laundry detergent bottles spread over eight miles. Or you'd come across lots of beer and soft drink crates, once again spread over the same area. Or you'd come across nets, and you'd find other nets. And it's not that these items get dropped into the ocean at the same time. It's that over years, the currents sort them. And so I figured that if we tagged nets, it would lead us not only to the net we had tagged, 
but also to other nets in that area. And so the nets have been wonderful beacons to help us clean up really efficiently. We use other ways of finding the ocean garbage besides our GPS satellite trackers. We also have drones and we do flight patterns looking for debris. We also work with our oceanographers who do um, constant tracking and modeling of where the debris distribution is. And we've been working with five satellite companies trying to figure out exactly what everything looks like from space. So in 2019, we did our first major cleanup. And in 25 days, from going out and picking up our trackers, have focused on these ghost nets as they are killing machines. And we also pick up lots of consumer debris in the areas, beer crates, buckets, detergent bottles, containers of all types and sizes. They ended up uh, bringing in 84,000 pounds of debris. In 2020, we also did an expedition, a longer expedition, 48 days, because we had lost some of our funding and we weren't sure we could do the two expeditions we planned. But fortunately, people were so excited when they saw the volume that we brought in from our first expedition. Funding appeared and we were able to do a second expedition of 35 days. And between those two expeditions, we removed 340,000 pounds of plastics. At that moment, we decided that our goal for 2021 was to remove a million pounds of plastic. This is indeed very doable, but I'd like to take a break before I go further and show you a film clip that was done when the boat came in from our first 48-day expedition this year to see what we actually encountered out there. The ship left from Hilo, Hawaii on May 4th, and here it is now returning to Honolulu with over 100 tons of plastic collected from the, the big garbage patch of the Pacific Ocean. There's so much plastic there to be collected and so much work to do that this is just the start. What you see on the ship there, that's just what's on deck. The whole, that's a cargo hold is completely full of, of nets. It's an honor to have all of these toxic materials out of the ocean. They'll be uh, recycled and repurposed. Nothing will end up in landfill. Nothing will ever go back in the ocean. The ocean is a source of health for us as a planet and for us as human beings, and that we have to take care of it, and we have to have a healthy habitat for ocean creatures. And to do this, we have to change some habits, we have to have much better waste management, and we have to right now be doing lots of ocean cleanup. I hope you enjoyed seeing the reality of the work we do. We've been very fortunate that we've brought in the highest volume. The 340,000 pounds is the largest mid-ocean cleanup 
that's happened any place in the world. We are committed to ensuring that nothing we remove ends up back in the ocean or in a landfill. To achieve this goal, we have shared the plastics collected with different companies for recycling, upcycling, repurposing. Some of the plastic is turned into clean energy. Some has been recycled and used in construction materials and insulation. So our 2021 mission will have two sailing cargo ships and one fishing vessel. We, of course, in future years, want to continue to scale up the removal of debris, to expand to other areas of the world, and to continue to find more and more solutions. The ocean is responsible for two out of three breaths we take. Our health is very tied to a healthy ocean, as is the health of the planet. A lot of the harm to our ocean has happened during my watch, during my lifetime. And I know it is vitally important to do what we are doing now to help heal this damage. Together, we can all be part of the solution. We can all make a difference. Thank you very much.